sports cars. They're great, aren't they? We love them. And the best thing is they're all different. Take your Lotus Elise, for instance. Now, there's a sports car you just hop in and straight away drive as hard as you like, from novice to expert and the time it takes you to stub out your fag and start the engine. Then there are different cars, cars from people like TVR, cars like this, the new Tuscan. Not a car that I feel inclined to leap in and thrash immediately. You've got to work up to these things before you become intimate. This, in fact, that's taking place now before you is the automotive equivalent of foreplay. We're gazing longingly into one another's eyes before we get down to it. Right, come on, you. <sighs> Wow, what mama! Nice interior. Always been a fan of turquoise. The first time you take a good long look at the Tuscan, it can be a rather unnerving experience because it's rather difficult to make out just what shape it actually is. All you're left with is a big bag of assorted curves, glints and highlights. Closest thing I can think of, and you're going to think I'm mad for this, was the first time as a youngster I saw an early Lamborghini Countach. Yes, I know it's all straight lines, whereas the TVR is all curves, but it was the same effect. It was a black one parked between two cars, and I couldn't for the life of me describe exactly what the shape was. I just knew there were lots of pointy bits and lots of angles and lots of highlights and it's a similar effect with the TVR, only curvier. The Tuscan is a long and eagerly awaited arrival and after much speculation as to what it would be powered by, what it would be based on and what it would look like, this is the result. And it looks incredible, very much like a show car straight onto the road. It's finally powered by TVR's brand new, all their own work, thank you, Gavna Straight Six engine, which is, to my mind, glorious. You'll find it already in the Cerbera, it's exactly the same lump. And in fact, the Tuscan is based loosely on the Cerbera, though I say loosely, and it is. They started with that platform and then kind of took it elsewhere. It's a shorter wheelbase because it's only a two-seater rather than four. TVR tend to work like that. They'll start with one particular point rather than necessarily from scratch and then take it on somewhere else entirely. It's balanced and poised, and the ride is surprisingly supple and smooth, considering it is set up to be driven fairly hard. Though certainly not to track standards of firm suspension. Obviously, the moment you let loose at all with your right foot on any kind of bend, you've got to be constantly aware that those rear wheels can happily slip away at any moment. That said, it's eminently controllable with those rear wheels, and if you lift at the right moment, you can soon gather it all up and carry it through to the next corner. At least that's what it said in the book. And the price of this much-awaited newcomer, £40,000, which makes it very much Boxster made, as many people have been happy to point out. But come on, it immediately makes a Porsche Boxster look like an MX-5. Right, well, to my mind, this is as good a moment as any to, metaphorically, roll over, lie back, light up a cigarette, secretly let one loose under the duvet, and think about stuff. Mmm, slinky, no top. Excellent, the whole lot goes away in the boot, which is, by the way, massive, as TVR seem to be determined to do. I suppose it means you can go away for that proper long weekend in your little sports car. This also gives us a good chance to see the wildest interior you're likely to come across anywhere, ever. This thing is nuts, but great for it. TVR have decided, right, throw away using anybody's anything else. They're going to make everything by hand individually. Boy, have they. There was a lot of aluminium seen in the Cerbera, but now they've added to that brass, which gives us these beautiful brassy bits, which makes it look like nothing else you'll ever see. For £40,000, which is what you're spending, that's, that's an awful lot of bespoke kit. We've got these superb vents scattered around the place, and you can't help but see this incredible binnacle. Again, with the Cerbera, they did something a bit unusual there. Well, they've gone right over the top here. It's superb. An enormous brass-faced speedo here, which doesn't sweep like it expect, it ticks in two mile an hour increments, so it goes around like a, like a clock, which makes the whole thing seem somehow more important. We've got these warning lights to tell you when to change gear here, which keeps everything going nicely, though there is a rev limiter to make sure you don't damage anything. We have this central LCD readout, which can tell you pretty much anything you want, but most people opt to leave it set to a rev counter so you know what's happening. And even the tiny little gauges here for the temperature of the water and for how much fuel you've got left. They could have been fairly ordinary in there, but they're not, because instead of having a needle, they have a little metal, a little aluminium shutter that sweeps across. It is like nothing else you'll ever see. And the seats, very nice, very, very nice. 
Just because it looks, well, more than a little bit different, doesn't mean that the Tuscan has to be some temperamental hideaway in your garage and use twice a year type of thing. TVR reckon that actually it's their most usable creation to date and they're probably not far wrong. Think about it, it is a proper coupe with the hard top on which offers you plenty of weather protection which makes it a little more usable for a star. The boot is enormous if you want to go on holiday or just go to the shops in style, it's perfectly possible. It is easy to forget with that limitless grip that you do have to be a little thoughtful about the input from your right foot because you can very, very quickly shake it loose. All of which is great because being sensible and practical can make you and me feel good about ourselves as responsible adults. Who cares? <laughs> yes! 40,000 quid is a lot of wedge by any score, but it doesn't ordinarily buy you access into that elite supercar club. Well, it does now with the TVR Tuscan because it delivers exactly what it says on the packet. Supercar performance for roads to money. The only difference is you can go to the shops in it. Uh, not that I'm going to.